Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to fry some salmon patties. And I've had problems getting started. I don't know what was going on, but I was trying to go through StreamYards and um, do Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So I don't know what I was doing, but I'm back. We're going to make some salmon patties. I have a can of uh, salmon. And what we're going to do, we're going to get this juice off of it. I'm pouring it down the sink. Okay. And now, I'm going to... Put it in this bowl. My hands are clean. We're going to take the bones out of it. And this little black, little black skin that uh, be in here, we're going to take it off. You see this right here? We're going to take it out. I hope everybody's doing well today. I was late coming on, but I'm here. I'm getting the bones out right now. And this skin. feel no more some people keep the bone the, the bones in there and they like to eat them but I like to take them out hello Linda how you doing welcome to the live I'm in here making some salmon patties I hope you're doing well today I'm using this can of salmon. I have taken the bone out of it. Okay, I'm gonna turn the stove on so it can start warming up. But what I'm gonna use, Linda, I have already cut, cut up one onion and I'm diced it up, so I'm putting that in here. Doing great, decluttering my kitchen. That's what I need to do, Linda. And I have one egg. Linda, my spices, Lord, they are everywhere. They are everywhere. Okay, now some people, Linda, they use cornmeal. Some use flour, self-rising flour. Some use crackers to mix it up, but I like mine mixed up with cornmeal. So I have a cup of cornmeal here, but I won't need it all. And my hands are clean and I'm going to mix it. Grease is warming up, and I'm using uh, the, the iron skillet. I'm going to put just a little bit more. So basically, you use about a half a cup of cornmeal or flour, whatever you might want to use. Oh, you love salmon patties, Linda? Oh, good, good. Now the grease is heat, heating up. Let me see if I can bring you over. Well, I'm gonna put a little pepper in here also. 
a little pepper. I'm not going to put any salt in it. Do you leave your bones in or take them out, Linda? So we're going to start petting it up and putting them in the skillet because my grease is bubbling over here. I want to move the over a little bit more so you can see in the skillet. Okay. Turn this grease down a little bit. Hey, Angela, how you doing? Okay, you're at the doctor's, I understand. I got about seven patties out of uh, this little group. This little group, this can. You wash my hands. Okay. Linda, I don't have a lot of luck with them, so I have been looking for a good recipe. Yours looks awesome. Well, thank you, Linda. We'll see how it turns out. <laughs> Let me space them a little bit. Okay. They're frying good. They smell good. Have my dish over here to put them on as they come out. Hey, Lisa Mead, how you doing, sweetie? Welcome to the live. I'm glad you're here. Can you smell them patties? Girl, they are smelling good. They are smelling good. And I, ooh, all I want is a sandwich with some mustard. Oh, yeah. And some hot sauce. Keep hitting it in this, this plate. Hey, Spikey, how you doing? We doing um, salmon patties today. Oh, yeah, they're cooking good. Come on. They are steaming up my glasses. I am determined to break this dish, I believe. Oh, I wish y'all could smell it. Pull this over. See if I can bring y'all over a little bit more. There you go. 
Hey, Homer, how you doing? I will be old. Come on over and get you one, Homer. Y'all, that's my son-in-law. You can come and get one anytime you want to. Because they are smelling good, Homer. Y'all see these things sizzling in this in this uh, skillet? Ooh. Now, some people put green peppers in theirs. Um, it's just different ways of doing it. But I just like mine with one chopped onion, one egg, about a half a cup of cornmeal. Like I told you before, some people put flour. Some people use crackers. Some people use bread, old bread. You can use whatever, as long as it can pull it together. And it doesn't take long to cook them. Not at all. Okay, it's six people in the live. We have three thumbs up. Y'all come on and give me um, those thumbs up. It helps with the al algorithm. I would appreciate it. Let's see what we got going. See if any of them are ready to come out. I say that is right there. Let it cook a little bit more because you know the salmon is already done when you get it in the can. It's not that the salmon has to cook because it's raw. That meat is already, I mean, that fish is already done. There is one out. Oh, I tore that one. I'm still getting the goodies. Hey, last East Dad. I want some too. <laughs> well, come on over and get you some, East Dad. Come on, come on. I'm determined to tear that one up for some reason. Uh-oh, that one's coming apart. And that's the problem that some people have. And another thing, you need, if you pat, uh, pat up your um, patties, roll them up rather, and set them aside for about five minutes before you put them in the skillet, that will help them to hold better also. Everybody entering the live, welcome, and I'm glad you're here. And as you come in, please give a thumbs up. I like eating these little bits like that. I love it. I tore that up again. <laughs> You got to have one that makes a mess. Look. That one's coming completely apart. But that's all right. Still eat it. Turn the stove off. Hey, LSP. Let's cook. Yes, we're cooking. Please like and share that. Thank you, LSP. That's when I boogered up. Oh, 
Okay. I'm going to show them to you. Oh, I hit the wrong thing. There they are. Look at that. Salmon croquette, croquettes or patties, whichever way you want to call them. We got that done. They are done. That was an easy one today. That was very easy. Now, let me get over here so I can see and go where I can read what everybody is saying. Hold on. That cooked up fast. <laughs> it doesn't take any time uh, to do the salmon. Linda said, oh, wow. <laughs> it wasn't hard at all. That's just a simple one. And I was going to fix some mashed potatoes with it and some beans. But I just want to make a sandwich. I don't want all that today. LSP looks yummy. Oh, you have to smell them in here. They are. And I normally like to eat them hot, too. But I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Uh, yeah, let's see. Hey, brother. Linda, oh, why LSP? Oh, I read that. Looks yummy. Spiky look good. East Dad, my dad, uh, my lady don't feel like making them. Oh, well, come on over, East Dad. I'll make you some. Ain't no problem. Hey, Vernell, how you doing? You done missed the salmon patties, Vernell. Let me go get them so you can see them. Where I can take you over here so you can see them. Where they're at. Hold on a second. I use one can of pink salmon. That's what I use. And here they are. One can and take, I took out the bone. Hey, Twyla, welcome to the live. I think I'm going to get one and eat on it. I'm not going to put any bread on it, though. So y'all can, I'm going to get the one that I broke in two right here. This one, look. Okay, let's go back over here. Get my water. Okay. And we're going to sit here. Okay, Renee, I'll catch the replay. I'm going to share. Here you go. Get your bite. Father, we thank you for this food that we're about to receive for the nourishment of our body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the salmon, Father. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's that. Um, I wish I could fix you some. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. I'm being bad, y'all. Oh, it's so good. Mmm. Hey, Atomic. Welcome to the live. You got to go to the dentist soon? Oh, I'm sorry. I need to make a dentist appointment. Because when I was sick, I was supposed to go then, and I had to cancel it. Amen. Oh, yeah, that'd be good with some rice. I love rice. That sure would be. Hey, Rochelle, you missed it. Rochelle, I'm eating on one of them. 
I say I'm see. I'm eating on one, and I made one can. Look, here we go back off here again. Let me show y'all. Well, I want to show Rochelle. That's what I use right there. Pink salmon in the can. And there they are. And all I did was that can of salmon. I took the bones out. Uh, one egg. And I diced up an onion to go in it. And a half a cup of uh, cornmeal. I like cornmeal in mine. Here you go. Melda! Welcome! Everybody welcome my friend Melda. I'm so glad you made it today. Thank you! You brighten up my day. Rochelle said, oh, that is like tuna cat. Yes, yes. And when I was little, they had mackerel in the can. And back then, you could get a can of mackerel for like 20 cents or it, it wasn't nothing. Mama did the same thing with the mackerel. Because really, mackerel in the can is about, it's like sound when you get the bones out and all that. And fix it up the same way. Be the best meal. A can of mackerel for 20 cents. Then you put that onion in there and that one egg and that cornmeal and mix it up and fry it in the, in the black skillet. Nothing hard at all, but oh so good. I love them in sandwiches. And see, I put the mustard and the hot sauce on it and then smash down my bread. <laughs> <clears throat> I love to smash my bread down. And I want my bread to be fresh, too. East Dead. I remember mackerel. Yes! Mackerel in the can. East Dead, when we used to get it, was 20 cents a can. And I thought, and what I didn't think, because I was a child then, but Mama thought that was high then, so I don't know what they cost now. I bought some. It was probably last year, but I don't remember what it cost. Mmm, this is so good. And some pinto beans and mashed potatoes would be good with it. And I still may do the mashed potatoes because I wanted to do the mashed potatoes to make some potato cakes. Hey, Nancy, how? Sorry, I'm late. You made it. You made it. I'm eating the mackerel. Mackerel. I'm eating the salmon that I fried. I'm going today to get some good stock pot. Yes, and cheap. Not cheap, cheap, but you know, reasonable price. But mackerel are cheap. And it tastes the same. Melda dancing emoji. Yeah. Mmm. Yeah. I'm gone. I'm gone. I tried to get y'all to take some. <laughs> I tried to get y'all to take a bite. What is the difference between the two? You know what? I really don't know. They both seafood. And to me, they taste the same. I don't know what the difference is between the two, to be honest. I haven't had mackerel in so long, I couldn't even tell you about the taste. All I know is that salmon is hitting. Mashed potato, uh-huh, potato patties. That's what I want to make. I still may do some mashed potatoes later on this evening. Because I like for my potatoes to set a little bit overnight. And then do the little patties. Rochelle, you couldn't resist. Rochelle. Girl. I tried to go live on on uh, StreamYard with Facebook and uh, YouTube. I don't know what I did. I boogered it up. I'm going to have to go and do one privately. <laughs> I 
I hadn't been live on StreamYards in two years. And I boogered it up. Um, Linda said, our preacher asked us to tell our favorite scripture at church last night. And why I was just being funny. But I said, mine was, come and dine and you shall eat. You should eat and the, eat the fat of the land. LOL. Yeah, that's not a scripture. <laughs> They were laughing. I know they were laughing. Uh, Brunel, now the potato cakes is up my alley. I'm not uh, a free food girl at all. You don't like seafood? Brunel, you don't. I'm getting hot, y'all. Let me crack this door. I need to crack the door to let the fish smell out and to let this heat out. LOL, let, uh-huh, too funny, Linda. I need to try this with cornmeal. Yes, Melda, not even a half a cup, you know, just enough to mix it. I've always, mama always she did cornmeal. I've always done it with cornmeal. And a lot of people do it with flour. Um... Some crackers, some breadcrumbs. I just like cornmeal the best. But it's good. Some pepper in there. I put some pepper. I didn't put no salt. I didn't. So, some people add some salt. I didn't add salt. That one egg. I diced up that onion. I like a lot of onion in it. So if you don't want a lot of onion, you can use a half of onion, but I use a whole one. And we got her done. Oh, I got 15 thumbs up. Well, thank you, Father God. Look what God will do, y'all. Just be obedient. Follow his word. Trust him. Do what he said in his word. Don't always look for handouts. Look to be a blessing to someone else. Don't always look what you want, what you want to get. Yes, yes, we speak, decree, and declare. But in that, you got to be a blessing to somebody else, not always looking for something that God going to give you. What have you done for him lately? Have you been out witnessing? Have you witnessed to one person today? Just one person? Have you told one person today that you love them? Have you prayed for one person today? Or have you just said, I want this, I want this, that, and I want that, Lord. I want this. Be a blessing and watch your blessings come to you. Be a blessing. Bless others. Yes, we are supposed to speak, decree, and declare, and make a vision board and make it plain. That's part of it. But when you're a soldier in the army of the Lord, what does a soldier do? A soldier just don't walk around all the time talking about, I won't, I won't, I won't. And we got to remember also, is this scriptorial? Y'all tell me. I just want y'all to tell me, is this scriptorial? Money is the root of all evil. Is that scriptorial? Somebody tell me. Y'all come on in the chat. Um, Atomic says, no hands out, stock up, prices going up. That's right, Atomic. Linda says, I can remember having salmon patties in elementary school made with cornmeal. Yes, made with cornmeal. I don't think they serve them at the school at the schools anymore. Brunel said, come on, Miss Beverly, tell the truth. I'm telling the truth. I, you know I am. I don't play when it comes to God's word. I do not play with God or his word. And if I have, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me because that's one thing. I don't want to be have to give an account for. I'm not playing with that. Um, Linda says, very true. I love to be able to help others. No great. Thank you. 
Thank you, Linda. No greater. And, and you don't do it to boast, to brag, and, and tell others, I did this and I did that. No. You do it from your heart. When you do it from your heart, you don't have to tell nobody. Only you and God knows what you did and the person you did it for. And sometimes, just go up and do for something for somebody and, and, you know, do it anonymously. Like you're in the line at Walmart and you see a mother in front of you with kids and she's struggling to pay that bill. And in there, you can tell when somebody's counting their, their dollars and their pennies. And uh, step up. Step up. Either pay, pay for it or bless them with some money. Pray. That's why God said, pray about all things. Pray about everything. Everything you got to pray about it. And before you step out, you pray about it. And a lot of times, God put it on your heart. And you know that that's what he wants you to do at that moment and that time. I done had that happen to me so many times. And I, in times I have been disobedient and didn't follow through then. And it would nag at me and nag at me until I had to do. I didn't find any peace until I did what he wanted me to do. It's not all about me. It's about others. We got to be other centered. Others. How we can, and during these times that we're going through now, we need to be other centered. You don't know who's sitting in their house, <clears throat> don't have food to eat, don't have water to drink. You don't know what your neighbor is going through because you see them and they smile and they're looking all right, but you need to go check on them, especially a senior citizen. You know we don't make that many coins. That little check we get from Social Security and a little retirement check. And once you pay your bills, but first of all, you need to pay your tithes. You hear me? Y'all know what the word tithes mean? Your tithes and your offering. That comes, it's not yours anyway. That belongs to the Lord. And when you're keeping it, you're robbing God. You need to pay your tithes and your offering. Your tithes is automatic. That belongs to the Lord. Your offering is where your blessings come from. Did you know that? Did you know that? It's what you give after you pay those tithes. Because those tithes already belong to him. Uh, God said he, uh, Rochelle said, God said he will, will boast of you once. Once you help in secret, leave it for others to give their flowers. That's right. You do it in secret and God will reward you openly, openly. You don't have to go around and bragging and I did this and I did that. Now, when you being a witness and you sitting and talking with somebody, if God put it on your heart to tell about that testimony where you bless somebody and how you help somebody, and if that will strengthen another person who is weak and not where you're at in their spiritual life, then you speak it. But you don't have to go around all the time talking about what you have done. But as the song says, what have you done for me lately? What have you done for God lately? You walk around and talk about all you want God to do for you. What have you done for God? Because we are God's hand, feet, eyes, smell. We don't want walking around here. So what have you done for God lately? Except for all you ask for God to do for you. But what have you done? Have you witnessed? Have you blessed someone? And you don't have to do a lot. Have you prayed today? Somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time. You know that old song? Took the time just to pray for me. A prayer for somebody, money can't buy it. Money cannot buy that when you pray for someone from your heart, from your soul, that you mean it. Do, uh, do you have a prayer journal? Do you have people's name down that you call out, that you speak, decree, and declare over? Except for, is the only time you speak, decree, and declare is when you want something? 
I want to have this. I want to have that. And I speak, decree, and declare over the things that I desire in my life, over my business, over my YouTube. Yes, I do. But I do the others, too. I do the others. And then I feel. Sometimes I, I really, sometimes I've had times that I didn't want to say it, but it's, it's in me like I, I, I can't, like it's about to burst out of me. I can't, I got to say the words, okay? That's what it is. I got to let it out. That's why the spirit is wanting to hear it. But if I go, blur, uh, I want a million dollars. I'm going to have a billion dollars by the end of the year. Uh, I'm going to have this. I, I'm, I'm going to have that Lincoln. I, I desire things just like that. I speak them, but I do other things. I am other-centered. I don't think just about myself. I think of others, how to bless others. I don't go around boasting it. I only tell it when God leads me to tell something. Because what I do for God, I do it from my heart. Linda said, I think it's not, it's not bad to have money, but to love money and become selfish with it is wrong. Like you said, be a blessing. That's right, be a blessing. Vernell said, how shall a man rob God? Through tithes and offering. There it is, Vernell. There, through them tithes and offering. The first fruit, you got to bring it to him. You got to bring it to him. It ain't yours no way. It belongs to God. Those tithes belong to God. And that offering is where your blessings come from. Nancy, thank you, Beverly, for bringing all this forward, sister. I didn't intend today. God put it in me. I had to birth it out. What he puts in me, I birthed out. I mean, I have to say it. He, he meant it for somebody, and I'm glad it blessed you today. Rochelle, amen. Rochelle, read the comment. Okay. Okay, each dad, I'm so glad you came by. You have a blessed day at work. Rochelle, uh, I'm giving you your flowers, Beverly. I thank you so much for your blessing spiritually and otherwise. To God be the glory. It ain't Beverly. <laughs> it's the God in me. It's the God in me. And I love it. I love it. I want to put a smile on God's face. You know, when you get a gift and somebody's done something uh, spectacular for you and, and you, you're smiling from ear to ear, I want to put that smile on God's face. And I want him to look down and say, that's my child. That's my daughter, and I am well pleased with her. She is doing what I want her to do. That is my daughter. I have called and chosen her. I knew her from the time she was in her mama's womb, what she was going to do. And, oh, Jesus, I'm getting cold chills. What she was going to do and what she was not going to do. But I knew that she was going to spread my word. Even as a child, I was doing it. And I wasn't a perfect child. Far from it. But I always had the love of God in me. I always wanted to please God. Even when my fleshly moments came in and I did otherwise, I repented. And sometimes I repented and I repented and I repented. But that's human. That's growing. That's getting knowledge. Melba, this is so beautiful. I am so happy that I stopped by today, sis. God bless you. God bless you too. You made my day. And I thank God that you stopped by. It's dead. Nancy said, hugs to you, Beverly. I feel it. I feel it. Atoma. Dennis time. See you picking up some canned salmon today. Yes. Let me know how it goes, Atomic. Uh, Nancy, take care of Tom and Rochelle. Yes, that's that was what Yahweh sent sent me to write for devotion today. Amen. Amen. He got got his all got it all in the atmosphere. 
Got it all in the, in the atmosphere. His anointed ones, the one he has chosen and one ones that we have called. You hear me? His anointed ones, the one he has chosen and called. Not the one to call themselves, but the one God has chosen and called. There is a difference. There are a lot of ministers standing in the pulpit. They call themselves. God didn't call them. They call self. Think about it. Because somebody speak the word and, and say the word, they don't, not all the time, they are saved. Some people use God's word to get what they want. To get what they want because they think that's what you, they want. They think that's what you want to hear. They think that's how they can win you over and good at it. Oh, they're so good at it. What did, what did God tell us? So you wouldn't know him sometime from the very elect. You wouldn't know him. But if you got God's word in you and you read God's word and study and you pray, you will know them. You will know them. Uh, Brunel said, Joy is Jesus other than you. Uh, hey, Peggy. Glad uh, that this came up in my feed today as I am eating salmon patties. Thank you for sharing your sharing the word blessings. To God be the glory. Because I always got to give him the glory, the honor, and pray because it's nothing that I do. It all belongs to him. It all belongs to him. And that's another way you will know them. Are they giving God the praise or are they taking it for themselves? Okay, Nancy, that's true. Melda, God bless you, sis. Thank you, Melda. God bless you, too. And God bless your channel and your ministry in cooking. Hey, Jamie Strickland, just joined in. What a blessing. Can't wait to watch all the show. God bless you. Thank you. To God be the glory. It's all about him. But we done had some good salmon patties. <laughs> Yes, we have, Rochelle. Come on, sis. I, honey, I can't talk about them enough. We better quit playing church. We need, better quit it. Because vengeance is the Lord and you shall. You shall pay for playing with him. Don't play with him. It ain't even worth it. It's not worth it. But some people still do it, though. So <laughs> all we can do is pray for them. Sometimes you can't even talk to them directly. You just got to pray. It's just between God and you. And you just got to pray. And when God gives you that peace that passes all understanding over that situation, you don't have to pray no more because you know God got it. You don't know when he's going to react, when he's going to take care of it, but you know God got it. God has it, and he's going to take care of that situation. Some things you can pray about it one time and leave it, and you're done with it. Some things you might have to pray about it a hundred times before you get that peace. But when you get that peace that passes all understanding, that joy, that make you want to jump up and shout and praise him and give him all the glory and the honor and praise because it all belongs to him. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is the king of king and the Lord of Lord. He is the most high God. Yes, he is. Vernell said, if I had a thousand tongues, I could not praise him enough. Mm -mm, we can't. We can't praise God enough. I love him. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. <laughs> it is the sweetest name I know. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. 
Amen. All praises to him. <laughs> he is worthy to be praised. And I'm not saying you're going to walk around here living a perfect life. It ain't but one perfect person. That's Jesus. One perfect. We ain't going to be perfect. But we strive to do better every day. We fall down, but we get back up. We, As the song says, we fall down. But God gets us back up. God gets us back up. When we fall down, we don't want to stay down. We don't want to stay there. That's not where I want to be. I want to be safe in the arms of my God. LSB said, that's my song. Yes. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name. I know. Yes, it is. Nancy said, beautiful. I can't sing, but I sing to my Lord and Savior. And it is sweet melodies to him. I love singing to him. I tell y'all, anybody got praise report? <laughs> anybody got a praise report? Something good that's happened to you this week that you want to, to share with others that the Lord has put it on your heart to share? Let me tell y'all this. In our church, uh, years ago, we don't do it anymore. Hi, Camelia. Hello. Welcome to the live. And I'm glad you came. Years ago, we used to do this thing called the Happy Praise Bucket. We had a, a, a bucket. Where it was a basket back then up front that you come down and, and you and you put your little dollar in and you um you tell what the Lord has done for you during that week or during a time when you know if you got a special blessing. And then well you you're supposed to it started out we give you know, you put a dollar in the bucket, but whatever, you know, some people put five dollars, ten, twenty, a hundred, whatever the Lord put on your heart or whatever you want to give. Because sometimes God wasn't in that either. It was self wanting to get up and brag and boast about what they had. And certain people, you know, when they going up there, you're going to be sitting here for 30 minutes listening to all that they got to brag about. And that's what they did. Talk about the vehicles they bought, the boats they bought, uh, the new suit they got. I mean, it was unreal. Uh, of the things. And we're supposed to be thankful in all things. Yes, we are. We're supposed to be thankful in all things. But it's the way it was done. It's, it was boasting and and trying to make others who didn't have it to feel belittled. And God wasn't in that. Now, some of them went up there, God was in it. The Spirit will tear you up, and you knew God was in it. But those who weren't, who was just boasting about themselves and what their dollars bought, you knew the difference. Linda said, I heard a preacher say the other day to quit going to God in prayer just to get a blessing for yourself and trying to get him to change his mind when he tells us no, because God knows what is best. Now, I I agree with part of that one that your preacher said. I, I agree with part of it. He said the other day to quit going to God in prayer just to get a blessing for yourself and trying to get him to change his mind. When, okay, now I see. I agree with you. Yeah, I see what you're saying because I read it wrong at first. You, Yep, just going to get what you want. Uh-huh. Okay, I see what you're saying. And when God and when God done, when God tells you no, you better listen cuz God knows what's best. And when he says no, I know it's things sometimes that we want and we think we know better than God, but we don't. We don't know better than God. And when he shuts one door, he opens another one. Maybe at that time this is not what you needed to do because God knows best. You know that old um, sitcom that used to be on, Father Knows Best? Father God knows best. He knows what is best for us. And yes, we may have our heart and mind set on this. I want this and I want that. And uh, that new house over here, like when we were getting this home right here, 
two uh two doors down from this house is a house that we applied for first and i love that house i loved it i like the way it sits back you know when you drive up and see it i love the driveway going up to it i just loved it but we couldn't get that house we couldn't get that house and i was so hurt disappointed and 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 because everything, the credit was fine, everything, but our loan just didn't go through. I don't, I don't know what happened. Even the, um, the realtor helping us couldn't explain it. And, and explanation, those things happen sometimes. You know, that's what she said. And I was disappointed, knocked down, didn't think I could make it, didn't want to look because I had looked at so many houses, so many before we got there, before we signed the contract for that one. And I just knew that was it. And it just broke my little heart. It just broke my little heart. And it wasn't three weeks later, the house I'm in, that this man, who, who was a friend of our family, it was his second marriage. And he, he was getting divorced. They were getting a divorce and they wanted to sell it. They wanted to get rid of it quick. They wanted to get rid of it quick. Never thought about this house. And then when I walked in it, this house is far better than the other one that I wanted so badly. So badly. And God just showed up and showed out. If you just be patient because he closed one door. He's going to open another one. And he did that for me and my family. He closed that door, but he opened up this door. And we've been here almost 40 years. Almost 40 years. This house has more than quadruple and what it's worth since we've been here. This house has quadruple and more. Look at God. Nobody did that but God. My daughter bought the house over next to us. Never in my life would I thought that my daughter would be living. I always loved that house. And I love the way it sits back. And I just I always loved it. And the people that live there, I never thought they would move. Never in a million years. Because they were here when we came to this subdivision. And I just knew certain families you just knew was going to be here. Then they built a new home and they wanted to sell it. This man that owns this house that my daughter bought was actually, before they got the house, was letting his sister live in the house. Let me tell you, for one dollar. For one dollar a month is what he charged his sister. One dollar he had to put her out because she wouldn't even pay the dollar. Have you ever heard of him? He had to put her out because she would not. She was trifling and did, wouldn't even pay the one dollar. And then my daughter came along and he, they blessed my daughter with that home. She goes in that home. He's like, um... But it's Everybody Loves Raymond. I love that program. And that time when um, his parents were going to move away and they were going to let uh, Robbie have the house and they were going to sell it to him. And I guess the look on his face, he was waiting for his dad to tell the price. He knew it was going to be outrageous. And his dad said, well, I'll sell it to you, son, for the price we paid. I think it was $21,000 or twenty something. They, about, they couldn't believe it. They were getting that house for twenty some thousand dollars, and that house was worth far more. You know, it's supposed to be worth far more, but they got it for twenty some thousand dollars. What he paid for it when he bought it—that's the kind of blessing my daughter went into. All that man wanted was to pay off on the on the loan. He said, "I don't want no more money. I just want to pay off." Who does that? God. God, nobody but God. They paid the payoff on the loan and walked into that house. Walked in that house with awesome, awesome equity already in it. 
because they were blessed by a man of God. This was a Christian family, a man of God. He wasn't out to make no extra money. He had no desire. He had no desire for it because they were a young family and he wanted to bless them. He just wanted to pay off for his house. <laughs> Look at God. But you got to pray. You got to pray. You got to speak, decree, and declare and do it in the right way. Don't be the, I want $100,000 by midnight. Come on now. Be real. Let me see what y'all saying. Praise God. He is good to us. Yes, he is, Jamie. Wow, wonderful blessing. Mm-hmm. God is good. He is marvelous. Marvelous. See, I'm the kind of stories I like. I like them. Look at God. Did you know nobody could do it but God? Nobody could walk into that but God. Just look at God and what God can do. And there's so many more. I mean, this week, God has showed up and showed out in my family. He has blessed us beyond our wildest dreams. And I thank God for it because he didn't have to do it. He did not have to do it, but he chose fit to do it. Nancy said, I just love you, Beverly. I could listen to you for I <laughs> Praise God. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you what he does and how we live. But you know, um, they show um, when the Africans go to take their, their offerings to the Lord, they be singing and jumping and dancing and praising the Lord and running up there. I mean, they happy to do it. They can't wait to do it. It's a rejoicing time. And why in the churches now when they say it's offering time, they, people act like they, they, it's, they it's something to kill them. It's offering. It's time to take your tithes and offering up. And they act like, oh Lord, here we go again. All they do is talk about money. The tithes belong to the Lord. That tenth belongs to God. You robbing God when you keep it. And I don't care who don't like hearing that right now. The truth will set you free. That tenth belongs to God. That blessing, that offering is where you get your blessing. And I can't say it enough. And since my babies were little, I have taught them and they have learned in the church, you pay your tithes and offerings. You pay your tithes and offering. When we get money, I mean, be excited. Excited to write that check out. Excited. And during COVID, we have um, Giveify for our church. Couldn't wait when I got my little monies to do, do it through Giveify for our church. Couldn't wait. And then when, when the church came back together, the first time we came back together, while we were out, we were out of our church for a whole year, to God be the glory, the whole year, people, 80% of the people in our church blessed God with their tithes and offering. They were giving it through Giblify or either on Sunday, they would have somebody in the church where you, if you wanted to come and drop it off, people were dropping it off. While we were out, one on other churches who were about to fall couldn't make it. We were doing, uh, the church got painted. We got new air conditions, things that were needed to be done in the church that we didn't do before, that we had planned on doing, went on and do it, done it. Don't owe no nobody. Look at God. Church kept going right on. And there's a lot of churches that went in financial difficulties during that time. But I thank God that our church, even from my former pastor, taught us to bring our tithes to the storehouse. So there'll be meat enough in your house. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Okay. I believe all money belongs. I do too, Rochelle. I believe everything belongs to God. We just got it temporarily while we're here. Even our children. Everything belongs to God. Everything. And until people realize it and understand it, we don't own nothing. 
My father is rich in houses and land. He holds. My father has it all. And respect him when you talk about him. Jamie said, you are so encouraging. I so needed to hear this today. I thank him for always having us in the right place at the right th time. Amen to God be the glory. Because I did not plan on talking about this today. But God had other plans. And when I open my mouth, I just say what he puts in me to say. And sometimes even myself, why did I say that? <laughs> but it, that, that's what God wanted me to say. Let me get this off of here. You don't make sport with God's money, especially if you say you are a follower. Amen. You sure don't. Well said, Rochelle. You sure don't. And if you see a need, you bless somebody. And don't worry about what they're going to use that money for. I done heard that so much in my life. Um, well, I've said it to myself. Yeah, I said that myself, especially uh, homeless people. Some of them, when you know they're addicted to drugs, I don't want to give them money, but I will go get them food. I will buy them food. It depends on the situation and and what you see, what is before you at that time. Yeah, what is before you at that time. And I have given money to homeless people when I was led to do it. But uh, most of the time, I'd rather make sure that they have something to eat, some nourishment to go in their body. I want to see that. I want to see that. Okay, I've enjoyed this conversation today. We've had a good time. We've been on here for this hour. And see, this right here. At the end of every one of my lives, I speak, decree, and declare now, during the day, if you want to encourage yourself, this encourage yourself to encourage others. And it may be somebody that you run, that you come in contact with where you need to say, you know, speak this over your life. Speak life into your life. Say the right words over somebody. Money can't buy this. Money can't buy this. But you can speak it, and I'm going to speak it over you now. And some of these words, what resonate with you, what gets in your spirit and your heart, you speak it over yourself all day long. You speak it. I am courageous. If you feel weak, and you feel like you can't make it, and you feel like somebody's tearing you down, I am courageous. The devil is a liar. I am unstoppable. I am victorious. Victory is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. Love. You got to love. I am love. That's what God asked us to do. That's what Jesus asked us to do. Is to love everybody. He didn't say we had to like them. I'm wrong for that. But he did. He said we got to love them. I am blessed. If you woke up this morning, if God opened up your eyes, you are blessed. I am gifted. We all have a gift. If you don't know what your gift is, ask God. Seek him. Ask him to show you what your gift is. I am anointed. Hallelujah. I am successful. I am healed. My body may look one way. I may feel another way. I may be going through a situation at this time. But my God said, I am healed. Whether I'm healed on this side or when I'm in glory with him, I am healed. I am healthy. I am beautiful. I am whole. I am confident. I hope you done found some words that resonate over you, that you can speak over you today. I am forgiven. Don't hold those grudges. 
Let it go. Because when you don't forgive, you're stopping your blessings. You can't go on. You can't go no further. You're living in that situation, that time, and that unforgiveness. You got to forgive that you can grow, that you can go in the way that God would have you to go. I am grateful. Be grateful for everything, for everything, and in all things, please pray. I am generous. I am strong. I am favored. I am able. I am powerful because God said I was. I am fruitful. Bear those fruits. I am God's masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece. That's why I call you all masterpiece. Because our God don't make no, it doesn't make any junk. We're all made in the image of God. That's what he said in Genesis. That we are made in his image. We all look different. We walk different. We talk different. But we're made in God's image. Remember that. I love you, but God loves you more. Why? Because you are his masterpiece. Isn't that beautiful? To know that you know that you know that you are God's masterpiece. You ain't no junk. And that person who's telling you you ain't nothing, you ain't going to never be nothing, you don't look like nothing, you're ugly, you look like a baboon, you ain't nothing, you're fat, you're too fat. And talk about how you look. Don't let, let it just roll off your back because you are a masterpiece. You are, no matter what they say, God said it. You are made in his image. you made in the image of God. Let those words resonate in you. I am made in the image of God. Thank everyone who's been here today. I thank my mods who have blessed me, who have let me talk, talk, talk. <laughs> and I pray that you were blessed with something. We will be back next week on Tuesday. I want to thank Rochelle, who's here with me today. The Lord has blessed her this week to agree to be my assistant, to help me, because I have a lot of stuff I need to do, and I can't do it all by myself. I realize that. God has shown me that, and God has showed me who needs to be there for me to help me, and I thank him for for it. I thank him so much for putting Rochelle in my life. She is truly a blessing. And if, if there's any content creator, create, creators who are here and you've been thinking about getting your t-shirt shop started, check out Rochelle. She's, she's good at that also. She will bless you with it. And she doesn't charge outrageously. She is a blessing. And that's what be be blessed to be a blessing. Those are powerful words. Be blessed to be a blessing. I love you, but God loves you more. See you soon. Take care. Have a blessed weekend, everyone. Love you.